All right. Uh, we now have Joseph, who is a former ICPC competitor, here to talk to us about uh, how the competition is going and, and just programming competitions in general. So welcome, welcome in. So Joseph, Thank you. what do you think is the most difficult part of competing in a programming competition of this format? Uh, for me, it's always been tunnel vision. Like you look at a problem and you think you know what like the actual problem is, and then you spend all of your time working on this. When in the end, you realize, oh, I could have just done this with like seven cases on a piece of paper. And that is way more common. Than I'd like to admit. <laughs> Another thing is just like sometimes you don't, like you don't figure out the right, I guess, twist to the problem. Um, and, you know, very like a lot of the other things like time management or like splitting up work can be just dealt with by a lot of practice. But <laughs> sometimes you think you know more than you do about a problem and that that's where it kills you. So, speaking of practice, uh, Joseph notably has actually been to the ICPC World Finals. Um, he... Uh, represented minds on the international stage in a programming competition. And as such, he did has done an enormous amount of practice for these programming competitions. What sort of preparation do you do? How do you practice for competitions like this? So I think one of the key things is, is that like like sure you can do a bunch of problems on your own and it's very important to like learn the algorithms. Like there's a there's a bunch of websites like uh very like the one people see on Google a lot is like Geeks for Geeks, which is not that trustworthy. But there's this other website called like uh, CP Algorithms, which is like a translation of some Russian stuff. And they have like all the algorithms that you would ever want. So usually like the way you can practice is by like once you know the algorithms, right, you can find a whole bunch of problems and then like work on those. Or like as the competition comes up, this is like really important is like with your team, go through, create a competition, and in like those five hours, treat it like it's a real competition. So that really just means like, when I practice like quite a bit more, um, that was like on Saturdays, we'd all get together and back in, I guess, the Awa Mode lab at Mines, we'd just treat it like a real competition. Um, and we did this a couple weeks and then we, we, got, we got pretty good. Um, when I was competing at the World Finals, this was with uh, Matt and Sam. Uh, we we had a lot of ambitions for um, like doing very well at World Finals, and uh, I mean, you know, like looking back on it, this last like the last week or something, I wish we had like practiced just a little bit more because at that point we'd gotten a little bit rusty, and you know, those skills really like the teamwork is really what disappears fastest. That's yeah, well, well thing one thing that was impressive about your run that year was that you, uh, at regionals, um, solved all of the problems, um, which is something that we have three teams this this year in the high school program competition that have already done that. Um, and there's still 47 minutes to go. So um, clearly we haven't made it difficult enough for them. Um, yeah, so looking, looking at the problems we have this year, Joseph, what do you think? What's I your take? Like right now, I just see the the scores, and I'm thinking River Hill High School is are like real champs. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, yeah. yeah I mean, uh, they were a dark horse coming into here. They're, they're the first time that they have ever competed in this competition. So, um, really, really impressive performance by them. So, with all of these high school students now getting into competitive programming and doing very well at these contests apparently what what advice do you have to these people in getting into higher levels of competitive programming in the icpc college and even maybe some of the students here that uh this is their first time in any programming competition maybe they've only taken a single class or just gotten into it um i think i i i wish i'd found out about like a website like cp algorithms like a long time ago because it has a lot of very good explanations for algorithms and it will actually link you to problems on like code forces. So I, I think the easiest way to sort of get started is to just join some like competitions on code forces 
or maybe try to like make your own caddis competitions and do those. Um, the Code Forces ones are nice because they it's like only online and they occur frequently and you're also rated. Uh, but the problems are a little bit more mathematical. Uh, I think really the, the first advice I should have given is go to mines because then you can actually find other people and maybe you will actually uh, re rekindle enough interest to have like a, a club for um, competitive programming. There was... Yeah, it would be amazing to see mines make another run at the world finals. Uh, yeah, it has it has been a while. Um, like part of that is just that with COVID, it's like you know they have they have to figure out how to do it, mm. and uh, it's a lot it's a lot more exciting when you're doing it in person or like with with your team there. Um, I think at World Finals, like there was a lot of energy there, um, and really. <laughs> It's like it's a very unique environment being surrounded by a, a bunch of people, and you know you you can see like are they doing well, are they doing terribly, and sometimes that's good and sometimes that's bad. You get to hear teams cheering when they finally figure something out. No, that's just well, you and me, Sam. Oh, is that just me? Okay. Yeah, that, that was just you guys. Um, that's just us. At, at World Finals, they like have balloons, and they do just a sound of regional competitions. But I don't, I, I, they never did it at ours. But they like put balloons by like the work area, and you know, then you can see like someone has like a special balloon when they get like the number one. So in this case. We, it's kind of good we didn't do this for this competition just because that'd be a lot of balloons. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of solves. Uh, the, the top of the leaderboard is really, really pretty full of green. Um, are there any... Pro I'm not sure how many of the problems you've been able to read, but uh, do you have any favorites? or? I haven't really looked at it. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, well... Um... I'll tell you that my favorite is M, so that should be your favorite as well. <laughs> um, sure. Yeah. Oh, no, Marble Maze, definitely E. Oh, okay, now the scoreboard is, is finally frozen. That okay. 44, so, second, 44 minutes and, ten, and like 10 seconds? <laughs> I wonder if someone just noticed and pressed the button. Yeah, so to, to clarify here, um, at a certain point in the competition, the scoreboard is frozen it won't change in order to maintain suspense. Teams can still solve problems, they can still fix issues they run into, but we won't know who won, except that we do. So We won't know the down leaderboard solves. Yes. Um, any solves that come in will be grayed out. So for example, this one with Arvada West Wildcats, we won't know until the end of the competition whether or not they got that. And that might be the difference between you know 28th and 20. 20, 20, uh, you know, somewhere like 23rd a place. So um, there's going to be a lot of suspense coming down the stretch, especially with these down leaderboard teams. Yeah, and it looks like really we have two solves, see. two solves here um, in the last uh, 45 minutes, um, up fairly high in seventh and eighth place. So there's there's potential for things to shift significantly, especially between you know three uh, place places four and, and ten as well. Yeah, all of these spots in the top between 4 and 10 are, are going to be really interesting to see how they work out. So, Joseph, one last question. Um, you are currently working as a software engineer. Um, how, and you, you also have experience just in general computer science. How do you compare competitive programming to software engineering and, and computer science? What, what differences do you see and kind of what what similarities as well? Um, I think the differences are really striking at first because like when we're doing these like small problems, it's usually only like a single file. You don't need to worry about what the code looks like. And you only need to do communication with people that have, you know, you have a lot of common knowledge with. And although like both involve like very a lot of communication um, for like software engineering really some of the most important things is making sure that your code is like readable that it's very really tested which is something that's less important for programming competitions because even if there's a penalty um, you have a test that verifies if it's correct um, but when you don't when you have to actually make the test yourself that's a very really a large part of the actual job um, 
I think this is a, another thing that's definitely you never see here is like the overall code architecture is more important than any file. Like even if you have a very elegant solution to like this one problem, um, really you're going to spend most of your time just trying to navigate the, I guess, structures of code that you've created or have to deal with from people long gone. Uh, I think it's it's actually what is it? I've been working on more like a machine learning stuff lately, which is um, a little bit nicer because people don't deal with like a very large code bases. Interesting. Um, but back when I did more actual software engineering, it's you really have to focus on like I, I really focus on like documentation and making sure that like things are like tested instead of focusing on anything like a complicated algorithm, which is really the opposite of what we do in programming competitions. Yeah, that's something where, that I've definitely noticed as well. You know, the, the most complicated algorithm that I've written in the past month or so is a for loop at work, whereas um, for even just preparing for this competition and kind of um, setting up problems and such, I've definitely written more than a for loop um, in the past which month. Isn't I don't think that is to say that, like, in the real world, there aren't interesting problems to solve. You just spend a lot of time hooking up the interesting solutions to whatever you actually want to manipulate. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, there's, there's plenty of complicated problems out there to be solved, but, um, you know, the problem, as you as you mentioned, Joseph, like, it has to be in a, in a package that is, you know, uh, uh, acceptable to be used more than more than once in competition you know the, the, you don't have to mm -hmm. you don't have to go back and read your solution code to any of these uh, programming competition problems thank goodness um. <laughs> so one more time joseph what was the name of that website uh oh the uh, cp algorithms it's like cp, CP uh cp dash algorithms like dot com um oh yeah if anybody wants to look at like a textbook that's just about algorithms um there's this one uh, introduction to algorithms by I think uh, Thomas Corman, and this is like the. I guess this is like, this plus CP algorithms is pretty much all you need to know for. I think, everything at ICPC. So high school students, listen up, learn your algorithms, come to mind, send us to worlds. Unless of course you go to a different college, in which case, just plug your ears and. We want to be able to beat you. Yeah. <laughs> in case I suggest, uh, what is it? Uh, Transfer. Transferring is always an option. <laughs> you know, if you, if you go to the wrong college, you can always transfer um, to the, the best college. Um, the, the best college, yeah, um, of course. Of course, right. you know, I think, what is it? I think it's safe to say nobody's going to go to something like Moscow State University. Cause that, that's where the, the very, very good people are. Um, for like competitive yeah. yeah yeah absolutely um, it's very impressive to see all the Russian teams and how mm -hmm. how, how well they do because it's it's just they, they end up blowing most people out of the water most years so yeah um, I guess that's classes. I guess they you know it, when you're living they, up in the in the very cold <laughs> Arctic what else are you gonna do besides sit in a Sit and do programming competitions. Like Alberta was our nemesis for a while at, at, at Rocky Mountain Regionals. Again, same thing. Those Canadians, you know? You know? Mm -hmm. um, what is it? Like, at least in Russia, um, a lot of, like, the, a lot of big places have, like, classes on competitive programming taught by, like, the best of, you know, the best that can no longer do this. <laughs> and if you think the people at uh, ICPC are good, there's a whole bunch of people who still do competitive programming that are no longer eligible because of age to participate in ICPC. And those people are on a, those people, um, there's like, I think one person figure, I can't remember her name, who um, is better than pretty much everyone else alive right now. Um, and it, it, it's, um, you know, if, if, every, if everyone else is uh, just pretty much our level, then the Russians of the Russians, they don't. They even. They can't even compete anymore. So, if anybody can get to that level, that that would be <laughs> that would really change the game in like the American scene at least. Do you have anything else for us, Joseph? Uh, I guess have fun. That's the you know I think that's the most important thing. If you don't find this fun, then 
don't bother. You know, you can focus on software engineering and just make a whole bunch of money instead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, most definitely. This is something that uh, I, I think it's, you know, it has obvious applications of knowing these algorithms outside of outside of just competitive programming, but it is it is something that you have to um, uh, enjoy doing for sure, because it's not mm -hmm. it's not your Google money necessarily for for all of the, for, for for these these competitions. Um, well, thank you for for joining us. It's been uh, great talking to you and good to catch up. So, yeah, it was great talking to you. Yeah, we should catch up some other time. I know, like you've mentioned some projects I haven't uh, haven't heard much about recently. Yeah, we'll have to do that for sure. Okay. All right. Thank you, Joseph.